All right, so I'll take a fan here. As you can see by the title of today's video, we got the top five 3v3 lineups in NBA 2K22 Next Gen. This is going to be a really cool video, so I hope you all enjoy. If you do, feel to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on them noties, all good stuff. And like always, let's try to 1 to 1,000 likes. So to explain very quickly what we're going to do with this video, we got seven player models right here. This is going to be very vague. It's just their height and their position. However, we're going to talk about maybe specifics of what you're going to have upgraded on them and all types of stuff like that. So we'll get into that later. But as you can see, very vague descriptions of what the build title is going to be. Five, seven to five, nine point guards, seven foot to seven, three bigs. We got the tall lock slash small big at six foot seven to six foot nine. We got the regular size locks at six foot five to six foot seven, small locks from six, one to six, four balanced just everything <laughs> we'll just explain that a little bit further and then 510 to six foot five offensive builds at the point guard spot so i hope you all enjoy and like i said if we can get this to 1000 likes i really appreciate it other than that we're gonna get straight on with this all right so for every lineup we're also gonna explain a defensive outlook and offensive outlook then an extra bullet point in terms of strategy that might be required or just an extra thing i wanted to say about the lineup so we're gonna have that for every lineup for number five you're gonna see we have the five seven to five nine point guard we're just gonna call this a five nine every time just to kind of clarify that then we got two of the tall locks or small bigs from six foot seven to six foot nine so with this lineup right here you're gonna be very versatile in terms of the defensive lineups you want to run and first and foremost i'm gonna take a quick break from the lineup screen right here and show you the type of point guard that i'm talking about throughout the course of this video because First and foremost, I think this is the best guard build in the game. I think it's really just one of the best builds in the game. And I want you guys to have a better understanding for what build I'm talking about when I reference this 5'9 Isaiah Thomas looking build right here. All right, so this right here is a very quick look at the point guard build that I'm going to be referencing throughout the whole course of this video. So it's going to be 5'9", 166 on the weight and 5'10 wingspan. With this, you're going to be able to have 97 perimeter defense and 99 steel, which is going to be crazy. And so you're going to be able to get clamps and menace. You can see going from 97 to 96 makes this cost one extra point for both of those, as well as Tyler's defender on all types of levels from silver to gold to Hall of Fame. So long story short, you want 97 perimeter defense. And then on top of that, you still get 27 defensive badges, 35 playmaking and 36 shooting with 99 three-pointer 99 ball handle hall of fame unpluckable hall of fame mismatch expert blinders all types of stuff like that you still have the maxed out physicals at 96 speed 96 acceleration and you have 99 stamina as well so with this build right here you're going to see it's kind of like a hybrid between a very small lock build where you're going to be able to at least play perimeter defense and go for steals you're not even really going to be the main focus on defense in most of these lineups but in some that you still are it's going to be a very very offensive lineup but either way, realistically, it doesn't lack anything, as well as the fact that with 40 driving dunk, you get the CJ McCollum dunk packages. I've tested this out myself. You can dunk while wide open with this build. So that prevents you, in a sense, a little bit from getting chased down blocked when you're iso wing or something like that. So just keep that in mind. I wanted to just make that note for everybody. And again, crazy three-pointer, crazy ball handle. You still keep the gold bullet passer, all types of stuff like that. Hall of Fame clamps, Hall of Fame pickpocket, 99 steel. I mean, it is what it is. This build is crazy. So I just wanted to give you guys some reference to what I'm talking about with this build right here. All right, so back to the lineup screen. I got to say, I don't think there are any bad lineups on this video by any means. And realistically, this game is very compatible for a lot of play styles. As long as your build can shoot, you really fit in with anybody. And even if it can't shoot, you can fit in with a very specific set of people like myself. I have 25 three-pointer on most of my builds, and it still works perfectly fine with the people I play with, even on threes, twos, pro-am, whatever the case may be. So long story short, you can fit in really well with a lot of people on this game, but we're here to show you the best collage of everything all together and show you how all these builds really mesh together to equal these top five lineups so defensively with this lineup you have two different strategies you could do again you could either be six foot seven to six foot nine with this lockdown or big man spot right here and you could both play sides on defense where you're gonna be able to play left and right of the screen between the two of you and then this guy right here can just sit corner whoever's on the big man when the shot goes up is crashing rebound and the other guy can also kind of trail in as well and maybe crash the long rebounds and stuff like that this guy can also play super long rebounds with hustler etc all types of stuff like that but anyway what you also could do is play a little bit of a front back defense and have one of these guys in the corner if he's a little bit taller and you're trying to prevent threes what you could do is quote unquote three up and pretty much you play the two guards up like i mentioned in here where you could have the point guard involved in the pick and roll defense as well as the lockdown involved in the pick and roll defense so if this guy's six foot seven and this one's six foot nine you can keep as much mobility in the pick and roll defense as you want and then boom this guy's in the corner he drops down for rebounds when shots go up and just like that you're threeing up you're taking away opportunities of them getting three pointers and you really have no weak iso options six foot seven is very doable 
five five nine is very doable in terms of iso defense too with crazy perimeter defense good steal good speed all types of stuff like that on offense this is what makes this lineup really really good so essentially if you both are comfortable either pick and popping or pick and rolling what you can do is you can pick the weak matchup of wherever they put their horrible defensive build so most teams in terms of the comp stuff right they're gonna have a really good point guard who has horrible defense i've seen so many of these stage pgs who have like 70 driving dunk on their build and it takes away from their defense entirely and you guys know them obviously they're gonna go super high in the playmaking and shooting and essentially what i'm getting at is you force that guy to play defense no matter what so if he's trying to sit left corner wherever this guy might be for instance the lockdown and he thinks he's safe what you could do is you could put the big man in the corner instead throw him over to the right corner and have the the lockdown who has the point guard on the other team on him come up and set the screen and just like that he's involved in the pick and roll defense and now you're forcing the horrible defensive point guard onto your really good offensive point guard and he's going to iso him for really easy three pointers or just really easy offense in general and it might even create a lot of miscommunications because those two people aren't very very familiar or committed to a lot of defensive sets where they're super confused they don't understand what's going on because that point guard doesn't want anything to do with playing defense and he's going to try really hard not to so that's exactly what i'm talking about right there you could have two different people comfortable with setting screens on offense and then you're very versatile on defense and then like i said in this bullet point requires strategy and thinking but easy to exploit weak links on opposing teams so that's my number five lineup right there all right, so for the number four ranked lineup, what we got is three different builds that are six foot five to six foot seven. I know at first glance this looks ridiculous. We got three Lonzo balls on the court, but essentially what this lineup is going to be very good at doing is exploiting the weakest link on defense. Once again, what we were just talking about from the lineup before this, where you're going to be targeting other really bad defensive point guards who have everything into offense what you're going to be able to do instead of that whole screening for the matchup what you're going to be able to do you don't even have to like set screens at all you can just give the ball to whoever has the horrible defensive point guard on him and just feel free to iso for easy easy twos you can be able to just dunk the ball left and right left and right all over the court every single time with that super small point guard that really doesn't have any steel to protect himself and he's not gonna be able to cut you off he's way too small so just like that boom you're isoing for easy twos now in another situation as well where you want to iso for three pointers you give it to whoever has the biggest guy in the court on them aka the slowest guy who can't really keep up laterally or anything like that what you can also do if you want is still run pick and pops and pick and rolls with this essentially there is no restriction to this lineup at all offensively and on defense same thing you can switch everything have two people crash rebounds every single time cover the cover your ground and stuff like that people run hustler all over the court all three of you and just like that you're covering a lot of ground on rebounds you have a lot of people that are very capable box outs and just easy rebounders as well you can easily make a build in this game that has perimeter defense steal block and defensive rebound while only having maybe sil like silver bullet passer or even gold potentially you don't have mid-range if you're making a build like this i want to keep you guys all just in mind that you're going to have something around 70 driving dunk no mid-range but your three-pointer can be maxed to about 80 ish or something like that so you're all going to be capable three-point shooters all capable ball handlers decent passers and decent defenders you're not going to be very specifically great at anything you're probably all going to have around gold to hall of fame clamps and then still have around 90 to 99 steel and then your block is all going to be around 70 ish and then rebounding will probably be from 70 to 80 and then boom you're pretty much looking at a super well-rounded lineup right here where everybody has the exact same role matter of fact i might as well show you guys the build considering this could literally cover all three positions <laughs> so this is going to be six foot six 180 on the weight it's minimum and then we have seven foot wingspan this build's going to have 84 three-pointer with again 85 ball handle 84 speed with ball 85 pass accuracy the only downside to a build like this is you do only get silver unpluckable you could make a couple modifications for yourself to get this on gold all you need is 87 so you just need two more ball handle but this build is going to be capable of having, again, Hall of Fame clamps, all types of just the perimeter defensive badges that you want. It gets the exact steal rating at 96 for the Hall of Fame pickpocket. You have the ability to defensive rebound. I still have two attribute points left over as well. So if you want more vertical, you want more offensive rebound, you want more dunk, you want more mid-range, you can put whatever you want on this. I do think you're really going to want offensive rebound for this build because I'm just going to draw a little scenario in my head of something to maybe bring to fruition for you guys. So 
if you're someone who's going to go and you're just going to ISO the point guard every single time, you're going to go for easy two point shots. The bigs on the other team are going to try and drift down to help your point guard because he's just going to be feeling all types of ways <laughs> about, you know, just getting dominated on the interior. And when those bigs finally do drop down off the corner spot ups or wing spot ups, wherever your teammates might be, you're going to be able to dot them really easy. And then with your offensive rebound rating, you're going to be down there with a point guard who has no rebound ratings at all. You're still six foot six with silver rebound chaser and 79 offensive rebound. You're going to be very capable in terms of getting those O boards and stuff like that. So I would recommend for even all three of you potentially to have offensive rebound and it's going to be dominant. You're just going to ISO whoever has the point guard and then boom, it's free twos. And when they finally do drop off the corners and you can dot them or one of you gets your playmaker takeover, boom, you're just getting three pointers just like that by passing to other people and you can green all types of stuff with the, with that playmaker takeover. So I think this lineup is very, very accepting to all the ISO heads out there and just people who want to just have fun. You, all three of you can have the exact same role all the way across the board. Now, reason why this is at number four, we're gonna go to this final bullet point. Can handle any lineup counter, but doesn't have any specialist with amazing stats for their specific role. Again, we don't really have a great rebounder. We have decent rebounders, but we don't have a great rebounder. We don't have great shooters. We have all decent shooters across the board, but we don't have any great shooters. Same with finishers. We don't have any great finishers, but we have everybody with like 70 driving dunks. So long story short is, everybody's pretty much really good at perimeter defense and stealing and that's about all you need in this game to play really good defense and it's kind of disgusting to think about three people on the court with 96 steel <laughs> and like 95 perimeter defense that does sound pretty disgusting man i'm not gonna lie and i don't know if you're gonna suffer a lot when it comes to rebounding i think you could totally get the job done i think when it comes to playmaking the only thing you have to worry about is if you go at somebody that's not a weak link and they are the lockdown they're probably gonna have a really good chance at stripping the ball from you considering all of you might only have silver unpluckable or at the very best gold and nobody is going to have hall of fame unpluckable by any means so that is the one downside to this lineup but if you're always thinking and just targeting the worst matchup at all times you're gonna be able to get really easy three-pointer attempts on the bigs and you're gonna be you're gonna be able to get really easy two-point attempts on the guards so I think this is a great lineup. I might even be sleeping on this. This might deserve to be at number three. All right, so for lineup number three, we're gonna have pretty much the same exact lineup as number five was, except we're downsizing one of those double tall locks slash small bigs and turning it into like a six five to maybe six seven. I mean, honestly, it's pretty much the same thing. I was alluding to the fact that you guys could just make a six seven and put them at the two and then make a six nine and put them at the three. But realistically, I think this would be best done with maybe a six foot five lock who's gonna have really good speed, really good primitive defense, steal, all types of stuff like that. He's gonna be pretty much a pure lock. I'll just put it like that. He's not exactly playing anything in terms of offense. He's literally just sitting corner, playing really good defense. This guy is doing all the work on offense. And then you have a small big for the sake of mobility, playing good hedge defense. He's got really good ability to probably still shoot the ball as well. And and what it comes down to is all these bullet points, variety of defensive sets you could run. You could go two guards up, AKA these two guys up on the pick and roll defense. And then again, putting the big men in the corner to drop off the corner for rebounds. And once again, someone just runs to the corner once the shot goes up and you're able to just, you know, pretty much rotate off of the rebounds and stuff like that when this guy does drop off. Cause when he drops off that corner, if someone gets the offensive rebound on the other team, you need someone to patch up that corner that he left so that he doesn't give up wide of a three pointer. Anyway. Or you could put the guard in the corner and have two locks in the pick and roll defense. So AKA you could have a six, five and a six foot nine right here or a six foot eight, whatever the case may be. And they could just play the true pick and roll defense. Now, what that might struggle with sometimes if they have a taller build in the corner, AKA if they put their big man in the corner, like a seven footer or something like that, this guy's gonna struggle with that. You don't want him there. And honestly, if you make that point guard build we were shown in the intro, it's not gonna be a problem. You're just gonna put the guard up in the pick and roll defense in that situation. He's never gonna go, go near bigs. He's pretty much guarding the point guard or the lockdowns, whatever the case may be. And then for offense, basic pick and roll, pick and pop to get the guard the best matchup between whoever's on the big man and the point guard. So essentially, if the big man has another big man on him, what you're gonna try and do is set a bunch of screens for the point guard. The point guard is gonna try and get that big man on him with the switch, and then just like that, he's gonna ISO him for three pointers. Now, if they wanna go like a true hedge defense where they're keeping the lockdown on your point guard the whole time, and they're keeping the big man on the big the whole time, you're gonna shoot through some windows. This is really just a basic lineup. I will say it's about as basic as it gets, and it can get a little bit more basic too. And we'll talk about that with the number two lineup. So this one is the exact same thing as number three. It's just swapping out the big man 
who's going to be six foot seven to six foot nine and is making it seven foot to seven three instead i'm telling y'all these seven footers and seven threes are looking disgusting in park if, of all the years that i've talked so much trash about tall bigs it's because they're always slow in previous years in this year's game they move they really do move and you can really really dominate with these things too so what makes this lineup so great is the fact that once again you can play guard sides on defense i don't think this big man wants to be involved in pick and roll defense very much but we might even show another video of me on my 7-3 playing hedge defense you can really do it if you're decent at the game but in a great situation where we don't want that to happen, I'm going to suggest you guys to do this, where you're going to play guard sides, where, again, this guy has pretty good defense right here at the 5'9". He still has really good perimeter and steal. We got the true lock, the 6'5 to 6'7 pure lock right here. And these two are going to just completely lock down on three-pointers. And then this guy right here is going to play corner on defense, no matter what the situation is, unless it's a second ball handler, in which case they're probably going to give it to their second ball handler and try to ISO this guy for three-pointer. Essentially what I'm getting at here, this guy is going to stay corner on defense in most situations that you will like to it's probably going to be a problem if they have two ball handlers in which case if they do have two ball handlers you're gonna to have to have this guy play the big man and hope that they don't expose you in the pick and roll defense but either way assuming most teams are going to have one ball handler you're gonna be able to put this guy in the, on the lockdown in the corner he's gonna be able to just stay there and stay stationary the whole time and when the three pointers go up or any shots go up or anything like that this guy is going to drop the rebound every single time and he will grab it almost every single time these seven threes are disgusting like 99 defensive rebound offensive rebound hall of fame rebound chaser you get like 99 block 99 into your defense again the hedge defense is is playable but it's not great and then you could still even shoot the ball you get 73 three pointer you get 79 mid-range with max wingspan if you want to go one tick down it'll give you 80 and you can get hall of fame sniper anyway Back to the bullet points of this, guard sides on defense, big man drops for rebound on every shot like I was just talking about, box from the lockdown on defensive rebounds where this guy will just get a box out on whichever matchup he's already on to help the big man rebound. One guard rotates to the corner as the shot goes up, we already talked about that, where when the shot goes up and this guy crashes out the corner, boom, one of, the, one of these two is going to run to that corner he came from to patch that up just in case you guys don't get the rebound. And then for offense, basic pick and roll, pick and pop to get the guard on the best matchup once again. Point guard is going to be just trying to get that big man on him and ISO for three-pointer. If not, you're just peeking through little windows to shoot the ball through, and this guy's going to be able to be a really good offensive rebounder, and he's setting the screens on offense. Or if you're familiar with the lineup that I even showcase, where I have a six foot six lockdown myself, and I play with a seven three big man, but I have 25 three-pointer on my lockdown. So I actually set screens on offense, and I have this guy set sit corner on O, and he crashes out the corner for offensive rebounds as well. So honestly, you can flex this however you want, and Honestly, even if this guy could shoot the ball, you could have two different screen setters. You could be able to do exactly what I was talking about with lineup number five, where instead of having two specific screen setters, you could just have a situation where this guy's the ideal screen setter. But if you wanted to get that point guard who's likely on this guy right here involved in the pick and roll defense, what you could do is have him come up to the top and set the screen instead, and you can move this guy to the corner, assuming both these players can still shoot. So Honestly, you can do whatever you want with this lineup. I think it's going to be looking really good, and it has a lot of versatility in terms of what you can do, and this guy is a rebounding menace. But we're going to talk about how this lineup would get really, really countered by number one, and I think number one is going to be gross. People are not going to play this in the stage just because they think it's invalid and they think it's not ideal to run, but we'll talk about this right here. It's gross. All right, so I 100% intend to actually have a video for you guys eventually on this lineup right here. Now, I have my own two different types of bigs. I even have three different types of bigs, if I'm being completely honest, where I have the six foot six, a six foot eight, and a seven foot three that I'm planning to be able to run on whatever the case may be. But I want to showcase to you guys this lineup right here, and we're gonna do it with me, AK, and Kitchen, and we're gonna have me on my seven foot three. And what's so gross about this, you are going to be able to exploit anybody. Like I'm talking, if they have a weak link on defense at all, <laughs> that dude is going to be thrown into the pick and roll defense and you are going to be able to ISO for three pointers. You have two five, nine point guards, both dudes that have really good perimeter defense and steal still for the defense. And you're just completely threeing up. You're not letting the other team get any three point attempts at all. What you're going to be able to do is you're going to have the other team scoring twos and you're scoring threes. And on three V three, that rules. It completely dominates. Now here's the thing. Every lineup has its pro and con. Every lineup has its weakness and strength with this. I will say you are definitely able to stop the other team from getting three pointers. However, if you do play someone and we're just going to go all the way back to number, number four right here, I apologize for the clicking and stuff, but we're going to go back to number four right here where we have this lineup right here. This one would hard counter the number one lineup where 
you obviously have the two five nines. You'd be able to just ISO one of those dudes for the dunks, whatever the case may be. And the thing about that is you don't want to actually just get dunks because obviously with that lineup, you have two five nine point guards. They're gonna be able to get three pointers up a lot. Now, here's the thing. Can they get three pointers up a lot? I don't know because you have three people that are very capable perimeter defenders. You have everybody with at least 95 perimeter defense and 96 steel. So there is no such thing as a weak link when it comes to perimeter defense. And if all three of you are capable ISO players, what you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to ISO the big man for threes every single time that you want to. So like I was saying, every lineup has its pro and con. You're gonna see number three right here again. It just is a pretty basic lineup. Number two, once again, was a pretty basic lineup right here with a five nine, six foot five and seven footer. And then once again, now we have the number one lineup right here where it was gonna be the double point guards and the seven footers. If you wanna recap all the lineups and stuff like that, you can go ahead and do so. The only one I didn't even just show right here was the number five which was the one five nine and the two like tall locks and small bigs, whatever the case may be. Again, all these lineups I think are very good and runnable. You can go ahead and like recap through the whole thing and just go ahead and fast forward, rewind through everything to kind of recap what number one, two, three, four, five was. To kind of give you the fast rundown, number one was two five nines and a seven three. Number two was a five nine and a six five and then a seven three. Number three was a five nine, six five and a six eight. Number four was the triple ISO lineup with all three, like six five to six sevens, or really what you could just do is run three six sixes. And then boom, number five right here was a five nine and two six eights, or pretty much whatever you want to make the case of between the two of them. But either way, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on the noties, all the good stuff. Leave a comment what you think all types of lineups could counter each other with. Like, I think this is a really cool thing to think about. I love strategy. I love just game planning and stuff like that. And that's just been my MO and my thing with the channel that I love to do for as long as I can remember. And what I love about this video is we put on for pretty much every playstyle. Number four was complete ISO. It was the it was the triple six six lineup. Number two and three is a pretty traditional lineup with like you know a point guard lock and big or a point guard lock and small big. And then number five was one where you could just play two six eights and a point guard that have like multiple screeners. This one right here, you have double point guards where you can pick on really bad matchups and stuff like that, and you still have the ability to rebound even if two guys are undersized. The num the big one is going to be just dropping out the corner and getting literally every everything so long story short i think all of this is really cool really valid i think all of these are runnable and usable people would hate this lineup in the stage though right here i promise you they would absolutely hate it where they all have horrible defensive point guards and when that defense like horrible defensive point guard is forced into like pick and roll defense and isos oh man they'd be so they'd be so hurt and this guy could just spot up corner if you already have the really bad defensive point guard in the iso already but anyway that's all for the video. Like I said, feel free to leave a comment in terms of your feedback on this. You think any of these like would hard counter each other or anything like that. I love to hear the strategy from you guys as well. And let me know if you love this video too. Anyway, that's all for the vid. If you made it to the end of the video, put lineup in the comments to show your supports made all the way through or put number one or really just put whatever number that you think would be your favorite lineup to run. But anyway, like I said, if we can try this one to 1000 likes, I really appreciate it. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed the video. Take it easy, man. Peace.